And Yuka Roy joins me in the studio. Yuka, hello. Hi, Alison. Now, European regulators scored major victories today in their legal battle against big tech. Europe's top court today delivered two separate rulings, both in favour of the European Commission. The first was against Apple. The European Court of Justice dismissed the final appeal by the iPhone maker against the 2016 order from the EU's competition watchdog that it paid 13 billion euros in back taxes to Ireland. The long-running dispute centred on a sweetheart deal a Dublin offered Apple, which let the company pay almost no tax on its profits. The ECJ also upheld the 2.4 billion euro fine the Commission imposed on Google in 2017 for abusing its market dominance to favour its own shopping comparison service over those of its rivals, shooting down the online giant's argument that it had made changes to comply with the EU. The bloc's competition chief hailed both rulings. Today is a big win for European citizens and for tax justice. It's a win for the Commission. It's also a win for the level playing field of the internal market, and it's encouraging. It's encouraging for us to do more. The Commission will continue its work on harmful tax competition and aggressive tax planning, both in terms of legislative proposals, but also enforcement. And you guys staying in Europe, a standoff between Volkswagen and unions is intensifying with the German car maker scrapping a long-standing job protection scheme. Well, last week, Alison Volkswagen uh, told workers that uh, plant closures and layoffs were no longer off the table as it struggled with weak sales. On Tuesday, the company made good on its threat, saying it would end a range of labour agreements, including a guarantee of jobs until 2029 at six German plants, a deal that's been in place since 1994. The carmaker would also cancel deals on temporary workers, wages for specialist employees and mandatory hiring of apprentices who've completed their training. The latest announcement raises the prospect of redundancies starting next year. Volkswagen's share price dropped more than 3% today. It's fallen nearly 7% over the past five days. Another German car maker, BMW, lost 11% in the stock market after it recalled 1.5 million cars and trimmed this year's profit margin. Auto shares weighed on the overall stock markets. Frankfurt, uh, but also Paris and London, finished the day in the red, reversing Monday's gains. Wall Street has been wavering all day, with the Dow uh, now dipping three-tenths of a percentage point. The S&P and the Nasdaq managing to stay up in positive territory, rising moderately, with the Nasdaq up seven-tenths of a percentage point. And next, Yuka, ahead of the first and probably only presidential debate set between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump later on tonight, you're going to give us another look at the candidates' proposals on a top concern for American voters, the economy. Yeah, there are similarities and differences. Both are candidates promised to tackle the cost of living woes, increase affordable housing, take on Big Pharma to bring down prescription medicine costs and oppose the sale of U.S. steel to a foreign firm. But while uh, Donald Trump promises to help everyone everyone through tax cuts, Harris focuses more on helping lower-income households by raising taxes on the wealthy and big corporations and offering tax breaks on childcare and for small business owners. Some of the key proposals from the vice president include a 25000 down payment support for first-time home buyers, up to $6,000 in tax break for families with babies and to fund the increased spending. Uh, Kamala Harris wants to raise the corporate tax rate from the current 21% to 28%. She also vowed to crack down on price gouging by food suppliers. The Republican candidate, meanwhile, is vowing to extend his 2017 tax cuts that are set to expire next year. These include a lower top income tax rate and the doubling of the standard tax reduction for everyone. He wants to bring down the corporate tax rate even further to 15%. And on trade, he wants to impose blanket tariffs on all imports uh, ranging from 10 to 20% and 60% on Chinese goods, Alison. 
And what impact, Yuka, will all of these various policies have on the U.S. economy? Yeah, that's been a big question among economists. A recent survey, a recent report by the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania stacked up those promises and estimated that the Harris campaign's social spending proposals would cost $2.3 trillion but would be partially offset by increased corporate tax revenue but would still add $1.2 trillion to the U.S. budget deficit over the next decade. On the Trump campaign's promise. Uh, program. That estimate is a lot higher at $5.8 trillion. But the report came out before the Republican nominee promised to save trillions of dollars in government spending uh, with the help, perhaps, of Elon Musk. Either way, there are concerns that those promises of big spending will worsen the U.S.'s budgetary situation. In 2023, government debt amounted to over $33 trillion, or 123 percent of GDP, while budget deficits stood at $1.7 trillion, or 6 0.3% of GDP, Addison. Hmm. And finally, Yuka, SpaceX launched a historic mission today that's taking space tourism to a whole new level. Well, the Polaris Dawn mission is an all-civilian space mission with four people on board and will attempt the first ever privately funded spacewalk. After several delays, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launched the Crew Dragon spacecraft designed to carry its crew to the highest orbital altitude humans have ever reached in half a century. If successful, the planned spacewalk in a high radiation area of space will mark a significant milestone for the booming space tourism industry. Eliza Herbert has the story. It's set to be one small step for man and a potentially giant leap for SpaceX. The Polaris Dawn mission blasted into space on Tuesday with a crew of private astronauts hoping to undertake the first ever commercial spacewalk. Two minutes into flight, everything continues to look good. Funded by billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman in collaboration with SpaceX, the mission aims to test the limits of what space tourism can look like by attempting to take civilians further into space than ever before, reaching a peak altitude of 1,400 kilometres. This would make it the furthest distance humans have travelled from Earth since NASA's Apollo moon mission over 50 years ago. We're coming up 70 kilometres. Once there, Isaacman plans to fully exit the craft using a series of rails. Separation confirmed. In the space tourism market, SpaceX is the largest commercial company, valued at US $180 billion. After the launch on Tuesday, it said SpaceX was founded to make life multiplanetary. The company's profits often come from launching Starlink satellites into space and from transporting supplies to the International Space Station. Similarly, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin makes funds through contracts with NASA and from selling rocket engines, making them significant players in boosting the US public sector's space exploration capabilities. Since 2020, 69 private astronauts have gone to space. While only the uber-rich can afford such journeys today, the sector anticipates costs will go down. In 2023, the space tourism market was worth 750 million US dollars. That number is projected to rise to over $5 billion in the next decade. And that's all from us from the business desk. All right, Yuka, thank you so much for that business update. That's Yuka Roy there from our business desk.